So, we're at the end of the year. Wonder what I'm vaping now. Let's find out. Here we go. Been at practice. This is about my seventh take on this. Um, first, I couldn't talk right, and then I didn't have enough lighting, and now uh, maybe I think we'll get it right this time. Uh, so, as many of you know, it's been a little while since my last video, and it's because I don't know. I've just kind of been sticking on what works. I've been using an IPV Mini V2 75 watt device with an Arctic sub tank. Um, I vaped that around 60 watts, and it was doing well. Um, I decided after doing a little bit of looking around on Facebook, I saw some people posting pictures of this this device that I'm going to review today, along with the Crown Tank. Um, so I went and checked out the Crown. It had really, really good airflow, um, and that's what I was looking for. Something that was a little more open in the draw, because uh, I don't drip. I don't like to drip. It's just just not for me. And so while I was picking up the Crown, I had been seeing this device and decided let's check it out. So what we're going to talk about today is. And this is where this gets interesting. So I think it's officially called the Rello, but it could be Rally Aliox, the Rally Aliaxanu. Kind of like that episode of King of the Hill where uh, Matthew McConaughey was trying to say Trebido, but he said Trebody Aztelox, or some shit like that. Um, they could have come up with something that, that was a little easier to say. Um, almost reminds me of uh, of Les Miserables, where some people say less miserable, so Les Mis, or if you uh, if you happen to be of uh, Spanish descent, it's a Les Miserables. Um, but so the reload. The reason I was interested in this device is I've been using the IPV Mini V2 for a while, and it's a single battery setup. I prefer single battery setups because of the way they feel in the hand. Um, I don't like um, box mods like my brother. He's got this uh, this Sigeli. I don't like this big square feel. I just don't like this. Um, so when I saw this, I thought, you know, I gotta check it out and see how it feels in my hand. And it feels really, really nice the way the way it arcs with my hand. Um, and this is the RX 200 version of the device, not the DNA 200, which I've got one coming. But it uh, it fits really, really, really nice, and it fits this well with an extra battery so it holds three batteries three 18650s so I can vape a solid two days day and a half two days on this with no problems whatsoever so uh, let's have a little vape and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it some more such a good vape I've got it at 59 watts uh, vaping some cut wood sugar bear um, in the crown tank using the point 25 ohm dual coil. Uh, super great little device. Now, a little bit about the features. One is the triple battery, which is absolutely phenomenal. The battery cover just pops open. It's got a nice little pull tab to pull your three batteries out, and they're stacked kind of in this triangular configuration. And that lets this device not have this, this hard square bulk um, and hold an extra battery. It does not feel that dissimilar to holding a, a single battery device. Um, it's just a little thicker. This is a 200 watt device. Um, it is a, also has the option of be temperature controlled. So if you put a nickel coil on it, four taps on the uh, the fire button there, it'll switch it over to, to nickel. Or you could switch it over to titanium or stainless steel or back around a variable wattage. Um, three taps. Okay. Correction from uh, from from J L motherfucking West Jordan. Uh, so three taps to get over to the uh, to the, uh, to the to the variable temperature control based off of what kind of coil you're using. Now, for me, I've had a little trouble with this. Now, it's not a feature that I purchased the device for. It's not something that I was at all interested in um, because I'm I just I'm, I'm good with variable wattage yeah, and the four ohm coils that come with the uh, with the with the with the crown. Um, now, but I did definitely test it because the UL does come with a 0.15 ohm coil 0.15 ohm coil. Uh, nickel coil. So I did the triple tap. It said uh, NI and then underneath it it, it had uh, some temperatures. Um, I moved it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. It's kind of neat because if, on the, if you're in the lower register 
when you scroll up, you'll run into Fahrenheit, and then when you hit the top of Fahrenheit, it doesn't like jump over to Celsius. So like uh, you've got um, the the lower register of 100 to I think 315 Celsius up to, and then as you cross that 315, it goes to to 200 degrees up to uh, 600 degrees um, in Fahrenheit. Um, and so I like to, I tried to use it in the Fahrenheit mode. So with the first quilt, cause I don't know where my video froze there, so I'll just kind of pick back up where I, where I was at. Um, so when I put the quilt on, it started freezing. Uh, no, chip. I don't know where I froze there, so I'll just kind of pick that back up from where I was. Um, so I put the nickel coil on. When I put the nickel coil on, it uh, initially it fired, it fired nice. I set it at a low, low temperature, somewhere around 250 degrees or something, and I gave it a vape. And it was a, it was a pretty good vape. Um, and then for some reason, it started saying uh, temperature protect. So there's some sort of temperature protection, I guess, built into the device to avoid. Um, overheating the coil because I don't know something about if you overheat uh, nickel too much some sort of toxins released or something I don't, I don't really know the science there um, and so I let I give it plenty of time to cool down and so I just assumed that I don't know, maybe there was something wrong with the coil but I kept tinkering with it and finally got it to fire again and then I started saying atomizer short so after atomizer short um, tinkering with it some more then it was saying uh, atomizer low. Um, so these are all different things in temperature control the device is capable of saying or telling you where there was an issue. Um, and then it would, then it said no atomizer. So I assumed that maybe there was something wrong with that coil. Um, luckily I had another one so I put it in there, juiced it up, waited 15 minutes, give it plenty of time to make sure that I didn't dry burn it. And I ran into the same exact strain of problems. Now I don't know if this is a problem with the crown and uh, the 0.15 on coils or if it's a problem with the device because the device is supposed to fire at 0 0.05 um, at, uh, well as low as 0 0.05 on nickel and with the DNA 200 version will, will fire at as low as 0 0.025 um, so I don't know again I, I can't I can't really comment on the nickel and the, the titanium and the stainless steel side of this. Again, because it's not something that's that important to me, um, I don't know who the culprit is. Is it the device or is it the crown? I'm not really sure. For me, this device was purely about battery life and raw power because it's up to a 200 watt device. Um, and I've, I've, I've fired it as high at high as 200 watts and it fires like a beast. It works phenomenally. Um, the ventilation on the on it is great. It's got you know uh, these these stacked vent holes on the bottom. It's got a couple of vent holes here on the side. Again, the magnetic clip for uh, for releasing the batteries. Um, it's just a solid solid device um, for the for the the couple of weeks that I've been using it. Um, some other little small features that it's got is if you have the hold the fire button and the power down button, it'll put it in stealth mode. Um, I think it's a little stupid on this device because if you're holding it like this and you're firing it, then you're covering it. Then you're covering up the chip. If you're holding it like this and firing it, oh, oh, I lost that loose. If you're holding it like this and firing it, you're covering up the chip. So I think it's a little ignorant to have that on there. Um, but I don't know. I mean, maybe if you fire it like this, then maybe the stealth mode comes into something that's important. Um, again, for me, this device is absolutely raw power um, and extremely good battery life. Um, it does have a port on the front for uh, uh, for pass through and for charging. Works fantastic. I've charged and charged it from dead overnight on with with that feature. Generally, I keep six batteries going though. Um, I was told when I bought the device that it, that it had to be matching batteries. Um, I have not tested this, but I'm pretty sure that if it's any any 25 amp batteries, if you have three of them, I'm pretty sure that would work. But err on the side of caution if you did go with this device, then make sure you get matching batteries, you know, don't take the chance. Um, good stout little device. Now I'm going to get the DNA 200 version um, because I want to play with this temperature control thing. Um, the research I've done on it says that, you know, if you build a paracord fucking coil that's got like a stainless steel core with uh, um, like uh, titanium nut hairs 
and uh, like a canthal uh, doo doo braid, then apparently it'll detect all the different types of wires and then properly adjust the temperature based off of um, what all is, is connected to it. Um, if that is the case, hey, that's fucking cool. Um, and I, it's worth having because it's cool just to have a backup for this one. But for me, it'll probably end up being just a variable wattage device, just like this is going to be for me. Um, so, anything else I want to say about this cool little dude? You know, great battery life, great power, solid device. Now, I paid $119 for this in my local vape shop. Um, I We found, which was VaporWise and Tupelo, um, I found these online for as low as 50 bucks. Now, I don't know if it's authentic. I ordered one just to see, uh, to compare it side by side, to see if it was authentic. It did come from China, so, you know, it's always kind of up in the air and a guess on that. Um, so, I'm not really sure. But, for me, double thumbs up on this device. It's a really, really good device. Really good power. Amazing battery life. Fits beautifully in my hand. And I absolutely love it. So, one more vape. And that's what I got. The Rolo Relux Raleigh Alley Oxtenu. And that is from a company called... Wismic. Wismic. Really good device. Come with really good instructions. Really good packing. Um, you know, I'd say a solid 9 out of 10. If I could get the nickel stuff working right. And um, with a different type of setup, I'm going to play around with the dripper to see if it is the crown or if it is the device. Um... If you're looking for just a, a good, powerful device with plenty of battery life, um, solid. So that's what I got. See you again next time. So we got a PS on this. Um, I got some more information from my little brother here who, uh, who actually turned me on to this device. Uh, apparently there's a firmware update for this device that, um, that allows to, what does it do? Yeah, it makes it respond faster. It makes the device respond faster, which there is a... There's a, there's a, you know, like a third of a second from the time you fire it to the time it goes. Apparently it speeds that up. And also, this is supposedly the only device on the market that does a true 200 watts. Because of three batteries instead of two, um, that is not affected by a sag in battery power. So it is the only device that can apparently push a true 200 watts. Now this could be um, PR, this could be, you know, uh, bees knees, who knows. Um, but that is the word on the street about this device. Um, so we'll take one more vape and, uh, and we'll call it a day.